Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren. Today we're going to be making over an entertainment center and I had done one of these before. Someone liked that entertainment center so much that they wanted me to recreate it, but they needed it to be longer and I found the perfect one. This is actually the exact same. I got this piece on Facebook Marketplace for $40 and Neiman and I actually had to lift it out of the basement door or all the way up the hill around to the front of the house because the people had moved out and they were like, yep, it's in the basement. The only thing wrong with the entertainment center is that it's missing the glass door over there, but we've found a solution. So stay tuned and I will show you what we are gonna do to fix that problem. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the hardware. So this is kind of weird, something I've never seen before, where the hardware has only one screw. Kind of throws off what I had planned for this because the customer wanted different handles. So we might have to go ahead and fill these holes and then just create one hole in the middle in order for that to work out. But that's fine, no problem. We'll just have to fill in those holes. This must have been a kid's entertainment center. It was downstairs and the glass is broken, so makes sense. I'm also going to take off the parts that hold on the glass because I'm going to be wrapping some burlap around it. All right, everything is off that's coming off. So what I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to give a nice cleaning over the whole thing because it's been sitting in our storage unit for a while and then in here for a while. It's very dusty and we've even got some cobwebs underneath there. So definitely needs to be cleaned off. I'm using a TSP substitute, which is also a degreaser. And this is just something that you need to make sure that you're doing when you're cleaning your furniture is to have that degreasing component in your cleaner so that it gets all the oils and dirt and grime off there. So now that I've got everything washed off, I'm gonna come back with my clean rag and my clean water, nothing else in the water to rinse everything off. Cleaning is finished up. So my next step is that I need to fill the holes. The holes here need to be filled, so I'm gonna be using my plastic wood X. And I would say that there's not really a right or wrong wood filler. I use several different types here on the channel and just when I'm refinishing. As long as it dries hard, then you're gonna be fine. Sometimes you do need more than one application though, so keep that in mind. And that's really with any wood filler. One thing that I like about the Plastic Wood X is that it changes color when it's dry. So it starts off pink, but then when that's dry, it'll become a natural color. Wood filler is on, so that's gonna dry, and that's kind of a buzz kill, because I was hoping that I was just gonna be able to go ahead and do some sanding, but we've gotta wait for this to turn our natural color before we can come back and sand it down. And one of those things that I've gotta get done in between drying stages is to wrap the glass in burlap. And so what I'm gonna be doing is basically cutting it down to size to make sure that it will fit around the whole glass piece. I told you that I was bummed because the door was broken. We had one, but then I found out actually from my neighbor that Ace Hardware sells glass and cuts it down to size for you. So I measured, I went out and I bought this and it was only $10 for this piece of glass. So I don't really know. I didn't really have any expectations, but I kind of thought that it was gonna be more than that. And I was really thrilled that it wasn't because it really helped with my investment in this piece of furniture. So after paying 40 for it and then 10 for the glass, right now we're all in at $50. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cut it down to size. This one's gonna be a little bit different than the last one I did because there's not those cool little rubber pieces that slide in and kind of hold everything in place. So I'm gonna have to figure out a different way to keep the burlap on there. But for now, we're just gonna be able to cut it down to size. And that's gonna be enough to just fold right over, right there when we're ready for it. So now I'm gonna go across the bottom here. Okay, one done. It's cut to size pretty well. Be careful when you are moving glass around though because I definitely cut myself earlier when I was moving that glass around. It's sharp when they just cut it. So finished cutting them and we're just kind of talking about how I'm going to attach these to the glass and I'm thinking either hot glue or double-sided tape. We're still waiting for that wood filler to dry. It's getting closer but I still see that pink so we're just waiting. The wood filler is all dry now both on the drawers and the doors so that means that we are finally ready for sanding and all I'm going to be doing is scuff sanding the surface with 120 grit and then sanding out that wood filler to make it flush. I'm gonna be using my Surf Prep Sander. If you are interested in one of these, you can use my code FFT10 for 10% off and I will link it down below in the description along with all of the other materials and products and tools that I am using for this flip and all my flips. Everything can be found down below. This mask as well. I just like the way that it fits me and the way that I'm still able to breathe, but yet it still protects my lungs from the sanding dust. I sanded everything down. That was pretty quick. I wasn't trying to get anything out. There were no gouges or anything, so I was really lucky in that sense. And so now I'm gonna take my microfiber cloth and wipe back all of the dust. Now that I've done that, we are ready to paint. We're gonna be using Melange's Jet Black. This is my favorite true black out there. It has that perfect black tone. There's no undertones to it or anything like that. And then plus, it dries very seamless and it's a self-leveling paint, so that really helps that aspect of it. I'm gonna be using my Zebra Palm Pro to paint this guy and then I think, I don't think I'll need any other brushes because it's a pretty flat surface all around. So when I'm painting, I really always try to focus on going in one direction. Sometimes I might have to go in the opposite direction, but then I always come back with my paintbrush and smooth it out in the direction that I've been going for the entire time. And that's just gonna give you a much better finish. If you're going for a more textured finish, then you could go all over the place. But personally, I think it's best to just go in one direction with your paint.
we got our first coat of paint on everywhere. So now we're gonna let that dry completely and then we'll come back for coat number two. It has been about an hour and a half since the first coat was put on and so now we're ready for coat number two. And I'm just gonna do the same exact process that I did for coat number one. And it's really smoothed out. You can even see that wood grain popping through. But other than that, the paint has done a really nice job of self-leveling. So let's get coat number two on there and then we'll move on to the next step. to attach this burlap. So like I was saying earlier, it's just a little bit different than the first time that I had done the burlap. I know I got super lucky with the way that that one was made. We're going to just put a line on here. And then we'll fold this over. And then we might have to add a little bit once it's dry. Burlap is secure, and I am hoping that everything's gonna fit just fine in the doors. My next step is to drill new holes for the new hardware, and then I will be able to go ahead and put the furniture butter on. All right, right here is where I can tell my old two hardware holes are. It's not really noticeable, but I can personally see just because I knew they were there at one point. So right in the middle, is where I'm going to be creating the new hole. There's an old, or there's a screw that's screwed in that's holding this plate on that's like right in the middle of where I was trying to do the hardware hole. So I'm going to remove that screw and see what happens then. Unscrewed all of them and not popping off. So that tells me that there's something right there that's holding it on still. This is really weird. Time to bring him in because Neiman thinks he can do better than me. So let's bring him in and see. Well, he even forgot to push record on his own self, so he, you guys missed it, but he, he made it go through, so I'm going to try this one to see if it's any easier, and if not, we'll have to bring him in here. This is probably not the safest way to be doing this, because it could potentially start a fire, but it's getting it done. So we ended up 
flipping the drill into the old hole so it made that hole again but then we made the other new hole in the middle so I'm just gonna have to fill the bottom hole again no big deal just kind of that extra step again um, so I'm gonna put some wood filler in there and then I'm gonna move on to the furniture butter so obviously that's gonna dry and I have to sand it down again and paint it again just a little bit of an extra step, an extra hassle, but it is what it is. We've got to make this right, because, especially because it's a custom order, but even if it's not, I still want to have quality work put out there. We're ready for furniture butter, and I've used this twice before. The first time was actually on the other entertainment center. The second time was on the Tally Green mid-century modern dresser that I did. And I really love how this turns out once all is said and done. The only issue that I have with it is that it takes so long to cure. So if you're trying to do quick turnaround times, probably not the best choice for you. But if you are looking for an awesome finish, and you have that extra day to wait until it's fully cured to wipe it back, then I highly suggest the Walrus Oil Furniture Butter. You can find it on Milan's website, and you can use my code FLIP10 on their entire website. It's not just for their paint, it is for any product that you can find on there that you're interested in, and that's 10% off with my code FLIP10. So check it out. I just put some on my brush. This brush also came from Melange. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna apply it on. I'm just gonna kinda go. I always thought that you needed it to go in circles, but with this type, it really works if you go in swipes or circles. You just wanna make sure that it's not gonna get chunky in one area. You wanna make sure it's all spread out. We are back on this lovely, beautiful morning and we're ready to wipe back the furniture butter. So I'm gonna have my microfiber cloth and like I said, I'm kinda gonna go in different directions but then at the end, I'll come back and I'll make it go all in one direction. All right, all the furniture butter is wiped back and it looks great. Everything just comes together when you wipe that back. The burlap looks great on there and then I'm going to be putting them back in place. So we've got our stoppers here. I'm gonna just put those right back in where I got them from. There you have it. Well, it goes this way, but there you have it. One done. That burlap looks great in there. So I'm gonna set that aside and we'll attach that next here. Just gonna get this one in. That's not like we can like hammer it or something because it's glass. Oh, oh dang. Sorry. Neiman broke the glass. Oh, oh no. Dang it. It's cheap glass. It's glass. It's got it for ten dollars. Even owes me ten dollars to go get another piece of glass. I really had to do that so that I can get away for some coffee. I'm gonna need to go get another piece of glass, and it's gonna be a little bit smaller this time. 
So this was 15 by 14 and 3 eighths. So I think I should probably do, well, I'll measure again. Dang it. I'd say 14 by 14 and 3 quarters. 14 by 14 and 3 quarters. That's the size that I'm going to get. Or I think I'm going to have Neiman go get it. Because I'm going to go to the gym. And he broke it. So I'm going to go get the glass, and then we'll come back and we'll put final touches on it. The person who I'm doing this commission piece for wanted some new hardware added. Unfortunately, it's not quite here yet. So for now, I'm just going to be putting on these gold T-bars and then once they get here, I will switch them out and fix that and then we will be delivering to the customer. Here is the final product. Like I said, this is a replica, basically an exact replica of another one that I have done. But if someone wants to pay you for a piece of furniture, there's no reason why you shouldn't go ahead and do something the exact same way. I love doing commission flips because it's a guaranteed income and then also this one especially, they wanted the exact same thing. So I've already had practice doing something very, very similar. The only thing that I'm gonna be doing is switching out the hardware when that comes in. So again, I will update you guys over on Instagram at Furniture Flipping Teacher. So give us a follow over there. We will be back here on Thursday for another video. So we hope that you join us here. And then really quick, I gotta talk to you about the numbers of this piece. I'm so used to sometimes having to be patient and not selling the pieces for the videos, but this one, since it's a commission, I've got the numbers for you guys. So for the numbers, I got the piece for $40 and then I had to buy a piece of glass for $10 and then Neiman broke the glass so he had to pay another $10. So we're in at $60 plus the hardware that I had ordered was $20. So a total of $80 and I am charging $375. Originally I was gonna get a profit of 305 because of the glass mishap, we are getting a total profit of $295, which to me is not a bad profit for this flip. It took me right around five hours to complete from start to finish. Of course, that's not including dry time and things like that. Always be putting yourself out there. Also, just communicate, communicate, communicate when you are doing commission work. I was in constant communication with the lady who wanted this. It's actually been several months in the making, but between moving and things like that, we finally found a time that I was able to do this and she is very excited to have this piece in her house. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned that commissions are one revenue stream that you can get other than just flipping for yourself and flipping other pieces to just put on Marketplace. Put yourself out there and get those commission pieces as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you back here on Thursday. See you on the flip side.